Well, the first episode of this series covered a comparatively reasonable weapon design, so why not for the second one look at something utterly ridiculous? Yeah, the Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. My first reaction when I look at this thing, as somebody who has handled a variety of functional swords and who understands at least the fundamental basics of realistic historical sword fighting, I can only go... That thing is a catastrophe. And don't worry, I'm not just going to throw my opinion in your face and just leave it at that, but I will be backing it up with arguments. So, first of all, that thing is not a blade, actually. It's called Keyblade, but if you actually look at the key bit at the end, it is pretty thick, it doesn't have any edge grind, it doesn't have a point, nothing. Yeah, it's lit literally pointless. So that thing has no characteristic whatsoever that would classify it as a blade. So whenever I refer to this as key blade, you'll have to imagine giant air quotes floating in the sky. Okay, starting off, it has the typical fantasy fatty problem. It's completely overbuilt. It's too wide, too thick, too unwieldy, bulky, cumbersome. It's, that's not good. That's definitely never what you want. It would weigh a lot. If I look at this thing, it would probably weigh in the range of at least 10 kilos. Utterly unnecessary. You don't need a guard that freaking wide and thick and everything. Here, this is what a proper knuckle guard looks like. Not very thick or wide, is it? That is reasonable. That is not. And I know, I know, there will be the inevitable fantasy argument. You know, oh, it's just fantasy, why can't you leave it alone? And it's magic and blah this and blah that, and it doesn't have to be functional and this and that and the other thing. The thing is this, even if you have a character with superhuman strength, and they could technically wield these things properly, well, if it was lighter, they could wield it faster. Which, of course, in a fight is a huge advantage, because if you're quicker and you can land hits before your opponent has a chance to evade or parry, you win, basically. And even just in terms of pure impact, it's not just about the mass of the item. Yes, if you triple the mass of a, a, any kind of weapon, you also triple the uh, impact force. But if you triple the velocity, the speed at which it travels, you actually get nine times more force out of it. Of course it depends. Against armor you would be better off with a heavier weapon, but everything within reason, even historical war hammers and flanged maces and, and things like that, typically didn't weigh more than around one, maybe up to 1.5 kilos. They weren't all that heavy, simply because if you have such a heavy item, you're gonna be kind of slow to react in a fight, because you have to accelerate the thing up to usable velocity. So that takes you more strength, more reaction time, uh, changing the direction takes you more. So simply if you have a lighter item, you will be much more effective with it. But even if we assume that this thing is so magical and made of such uh, exotic high quality materials that it has the exact right way despite looking that bulky, there's still a number of problems with it. And for that I made a mock-up of the grip here, um, just minus the end part, that's not the most problematic aspect about this thing. And this here is the exact right proportions. I took the original artwork, printed it out and, you know, cut it out in cardboard and put this thing together. If you look at original artwork of Sora, the main character in Kingdom Hearts, who has one of these, um, yeah, he, his body is very disproportionate and he has uh, grotesquely oversized hands and everything. But even so, if you were to stretch this to realistic proportions, it is still very clearly a one-handed weapon. The main problem with this is, obviously they went for the, the whole key aesthetic. And uh, those things apparently also do have a function as a key. So yeah, it's part of the, the, the entire theme. 
but um, it makes it completely useless. A knuckle guard in and of itself is fine. It is pretty useful in fact, but this basically has kind of a double knuckle guard. And first of all, the, the piece here at the back, that obviously does nothing for you. The piece in front protects your hand. This here, yeah, sure, if you happen to get a sword cut here, let's say, yeah, that would give a little bit of protection. But usually the guard of a sword or saber sticks out in this direction anyway. So most strikes that go to the back of your hand, or to the base of your thumb, I should say, don't get past that anyway. So this is completely useless. It does nothing for you other than sabotage you. And for one, it does that by making the key bit at the end, which is presumably the dangerous part that you strike with, it would make that very ineffective. Why? The way that key bit is attached is basically similar to an axe or tomahawk. And what you want to do with an axe is you want to keep everything in line with your forearm, which in fact you want to do with a sword as well. But um, it is very important because you want to transfer the force that you put into it effectively into the target. So if you have everything in line, the force of the swing travels along the axis where the blade is, right? Pretty obvious. With this thing, that piece would be on the exact same axis as the guard here. So unless you hold it like this, it can't be in line. Impossible, because it always pushes against your wrist here. So you can't, it's, it's simply impossible. If everything was properly aligned, the guard would basically stick out of your forearm. So that's obviously not possible. Now that's no good because if I were to hold an X at a weird off-center angle like this, what happens is the moment it strikes something, because it is it already tends towards this weird angle here, whereas the force comes straight down, so it kind of forces it to do this. It basically makes it much more likely to bounce off. This is how it ideally should be. Nice and aligned. If it's off center in relation to the 45 degree angle, it hits like this. So it just glances off. It just If you're striking just with a round stick, it doesn't matter, of course. Regardless what angle it hits, it's always the same. But if you have a piece sticking out like that, it actually naturally makes it more prone to just bounce off if you don't have it aligned properly. And there's nothing you can do about this. If you hold it like this, it's in fact even worse. There's one way you could solve this problem. Namely, there is a historical technique where you actually put your thumb on the blade like this and you strike this way. It's a typical longsword technique. So you could do that with this thing too. So then you can kind of strike like that. But the problem is it of course limits your options. If you can only strike like this, there are some things like some things you simply cannot do. Uh, this grip was highly specialized. You would only use it in certain situations. If you were forced to fight like that all the time, that wouldn't be very useful. So this thing would totally sabotage you, would make you less effective, would uh, limit your options, would cause all sorts of problems. And one of them I haven't even mentioned yet, which is a very severe problem. Namely, if you have a key bit here, any time there is pressure against this piece and it rotates, that pressure translates to a rotation of this piece here. And it already digs into your wrist. In fact, if I use this saber here the wrong way around and I swing it around a little bit, I can already feel that it's 
very uncomfortably rubbing against the wrist. So with a metal object, and even worse, there are some Keyblade designs which have spikes on there. In other words, you would impale your wrist or start sawing through your wrist or your forearm over time, which is of course awesome, isn't it? But uh, the main problem here is if you strike something and this thing rotates in your hand, that's broken wrist time right there. Or imagine your opponent who, knew, who knows what they're doing notices your ridiculous guard here and deliberately strikes against the guard. Yeah. Guess what happens? Painful. It doesn't matter which way you hold it around. If you hold it here, again, a strike here would just crush your wrist there. And even worse, if they give you a really good slap, watch what happens. That's broken thumb time. It would get stuck right here and break your thumb. Awesome. So do you understand why I find this so ridiculous? A weapon that endangers yourself, that could break your wrist or your thumb, that's obviously not a good idea. Even if it's oh so magical. It makes no sense. By the way, speaking of magical, if the entire thing is imbued with magical powers and whatever, and uh, the, the key function is also magical, whatever, um, why is that metal? Why isn't this just illusion magic? Those could just be holographic, you know, just for the looks, just to make it look like a key. It, it doesn't have to be a solid thing. If, if there's magic involved anyway, your hand could just pass right through. And then you could have only one side being metal, so that it's a proper guard, and the other thing is just an illusion, so it doesn't bother you. Wouldn't that make sense? So what could we do to fix all these problems? Well, you could use it like this. And now you have a passable weapon. If you were to strike with this part, that makes a lot more sense. It would still not be ideal, because the thing is cylindrical, so in other words, it's not that easy to, to feel exactly where those things are pointing to. If you want to stick to the key blade look, how can we fix this? Well, how about Like this, <laughs> getting rid of the problem. Yes, that makes a lot more sense because now I can align it properly. I don't have to worry about my wrist getting broken. And also, like I already said, the uh, supposed blade is not a blade. So what I would personally do is turn it into an ax blade. If you just make the entire thing solid, put an edge on it, yeah that would work. Granted, it wouldn't look like a key bit anymore, although I guess you could just add some decorations to at least hint at it being supposed to look like a, like a key. Or magic. You could just, you know, illusion magic. You could make it look like a key, whatever. But um, a blade like that, yeah, that would be much more effective. If you want to really stick to the key shape, then first of all, you shouldn't call it a blade, you should call it a key mace, for instance. And I think it would be much more useful to make the key bit smaller and then have one on each side, have four of them. Yeah, again, doesn't look too key-like, at least not a regular key. You could call it an extra secure key because it has four bits. Um, yeah. And that would make a lot more sense because then you can use it like a mace and then it doesn't matter too much how you align the thing. Because whatever angle you're hitting it at, if it has four bits or flanges, yeah, you're good to go. Well, there was a lot to talk about, but no wonder with such a ludicrous design. Whoever came up with this thing clearly didn't give a fluff. It was really just about, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have a key as a weapon? Yeah. It wouldn't.